Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a very interesting box of stuff. I am not kidding. This one is really going to surprise you. But for if you are an opera person or a vocal music person generally, actually, even if you're not really a heavy-duty opera person, this is amazing. It's called and it's available. And I checked with Amazon and there were at least a dozen of them sitting around and it's cheap. It's 15 discs for 30 bucks. It is called Opera auf Deutsch. That's how you look it up on Amazon. Opera auf Deutsch. There, see that? Write that down. These were all Deutsche Grammophon recordings made in the early 60s of opera highlights in German. I mean, French and Italian operas in German, not German operas, operas in other language, in absolutely ghastly German translations for the most part, but it doesn't matter because they don't include the text, which is actually a mercy. You're not going to want to know what these people are saying or how awful the translations are. You know, there are some, some you know, myths about this kind of thing. You know, the time was, especially in Europe, um, up until the Second World War, let's say, where opera was performed in the language of the place in which it was being performed. A very sensible thing, in my view. It was only when the international opera circuit began that everyone started doing opera in the original language because you couldn't expect a famous, say, you know, Russian or Polish singer to learn an Italian opera in German and French and English. I mean, you just couldn't expect Back that. Of course, in the United States, everything was sung in Italian. Richard Strauss's Electra was first performed in Italian because that's what people expected and that's who the audience for opera was. So the idea of doing it in a not original language, which is like anathema today, was actually standard practice and a sensible practice because it presumed that the people who were listening to the opera actually wanted to understand what the singers were singing about. I mean, you got the words, you could have the libretto, now we have some super titles and all that. But I think it, it's, it is true that there is a difference between a singer singing an opera in a language they've acquired and singing it in their native language, which they just inherently understand. Even if they've studied it to death and are fluent in that other language and know what they're singing about, there is no substitute for not having to think about what you're actually saying and simply knowing what it means so that you can focus all of your time and attention on expressing the emotional meaning of what the words are rather than enunciating them correctly or pronouncing or doing whatever you're doing. There's always, there's always a wall, you know, between, between a language we know and a language we've learned. There's, there's just, that's just a fact. That's the reality. And, and uh, you know, now, do we notice the difference? That's the question. The real question is, do we notice the difference? Because some of these singers, by the way, who are singing in German are not German singers. They're American singers. There are other singers like that. So, you know, or from other places, but they're singing in German. So you don't get, you don't get an, an unalloyed, you know, Germanosity throughout all 15 CDs of highlights of 15 different operas or 16 operas, I think, actually. Yes. Uh, you don't quite get that. You don't. Um, and some of these are actually German operas, so you know, one or two of them are anyway. But that, it's not, none of that matters. What matters is that we have an unbelievably fine cast of singers singing opera highlights. And if you don't care what language they're in, especially since if you're one of my American viewers, you're probably not speaking German. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it's a little bizarre. Okay, so you've got Carmen. And Carmen is, you know, singing, you know, La mort est une oiseau rebelle. It's, you know, it's, you know, die, it's, die Liebe, die Liebe ist ein Vogel, I don't know, aufsteigen Schnitt, I don't know. You know, it's, Toriador sei fertig vor den Blitzkrieg. 
you know, I mean, sometimes the syllables don't quite work out, you know, or, or, or in La Traviata, you know, instead of sempre libre, always free, ich will mein Freiheit haben, you know, I mean, who God knows what they're saying, and who cares? I mean, really, who cares? I just want to hear great singing. And the thing about this 15 disc set for 30 bucks, Opera auf Deutsch, there it is, is that you, it's just really some great, great singing by singers you might not be too familiar with. And they're wonderful. Let's just go through these 15 discs quickly, and I'll tell you who does what, and then you'll know if you want them. I mean, it's just a real little collector's item. And it, I can't believe, with all of the craziness, you know, of, oh, you get like original covers. Look at that. It's an original cover. Ooh, that's pretty neat. I mean, you know, for all of that, it's still in print. For all the stuff that Deutsche Gramophone is deleting willy-nilly, all the fabulous boxes and other things you can't find, you can find this. I find that incredible. It may have an endless market in Germany. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. So anyway, let's just look at what these are. I mean, they're all stereo. They all sound fine. And it's just really nifty. First, you get, of course, Carmen. Yes, you get Carmen. Carmen is sung by, let's see, Don Jose is Ernst Kozob, who is a marvelous Don Jose. Do not let the name fool you. You've got to listen. Franz Cross, Escamillo. I mean, Franz Cross is terrific. And, and let's see, who's Carmen? Gisela Litz. And Michaela is Rosal Schweger. I mean, just the names themselves make you salivate to hear them spill their guts in German, doesn't it? I mean, come on. All right, so, oh, yeah, look at the pictures. Oh, I love the pictures. Don't you love the pictures? You know, I can do that. I've got castanets. I do. You know, well, you've seen them on other videos. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, Eugene, Eugene, Eugene Dalbert, Tiefland. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's in German anyway. And let's see, it's with Inga Bork. <laughs> oh, Inga Bork, you know, that salivating Electra, you know, who's, oh my goodness, spawn of Caligula she is in this show. She's wonderful. She just pants and heaves. Hans Hopf, Thomas Stewart, who of course is not German, but he's practically. Um, and let's see, Johannes uh, a, a Eltesta, and Katarina Alda and Hans Bruno Ernst. And then we've got Kevin Pag, Cavalleria Rusticana and Pagliacci, or, or Der Bayazzo, if you want to call it that in Deutsch. Gloria Davy as Santuzza. Gloria Davy was a very good singer. I mean, you know, some of these singers spent their lives, you know, making the rounds of the German provincial opera houses. So many American singers got their start there. I mean, Jesse Norman got her start there. Marilyn Horn got her start there, you know, in horrible places like Gelsenkirchen and things like that. But the fact of the matter is that, that there was opera there and there were jobs there. And some of them had breakout international careers and some of them didn't. But some of them were very, very fine. And you've got Sh Shandor Konya as Toridu, fantastic tenor. And let's see, Yonako Nagano, well, she wasn't German, as Lucia and Walter Berry. Look at that, Walter Berry, and it's the orchestra of the Deutsche Oper Berlin under Janusz Kulka. And for Pagliacci, you've got Annie Schlem as Neda, and Shandor Konya again as Kanio and Walter Berry and Donald Groba. I mean, you know, this is a great cast. Great cast doing these excerpts. Lortzing, Tsar and Zimmerman. Well, this is sort of local German consumption music. I mean, it's a lovely work. Tsar and Zimmerman, Lortzing generally is a very underrated composer, I have to say. And the singers are Ingeborg Hallstein, Claudia Hellmann. Oh, and this other guy, Tsar Peter I, this guy named Dietrich Fischer Dieskau. Yeah. And Fritz Wunderlicht. Fritz Wunderlicht is the Marquis de Chateauneuf. I mean, you know, right? What could be bad? Then we've got Die Hochzeit des Figaro by Mozart with Fischer Diskau, Maria Stadter, Walter Berry, Rita Streich, Hanny Steffik as Carabino. That's a, that would be a great cast in any language. It really would. And Offenbach, Hoffmann's Erzählungen, The Tales of Hoffmann, with Matti Wilde Dobbs and Gladys 
Kuchta and Heidi Klug and Tzvieta Allen and then good Shandor Konya. He's there and Thomas Stewart. Thomas Stewart. Stewart. Thomas Stewart. You know, there they all are smiling at us. You get pictures. It's a nice booklet. It doesn't say a word about, you know, other than the weirdness of hearing these things in German. There is an English translation of a note, which is kind of fun to read. And then we have La Boheme, which in German is La Boheme. And let's see, it's with Shandor Konya, Horst Gunther, Fischer Dieskau as Marcello, Pilar Lorengar as Mimi, Rita Streich as Musetta. I mean, aren't you drooling, you opera people? All of you crazy opera, opera thingy people, critters out there. And if you're not an opera critter, I mean, you know, don't worry about it. You want to hear good excerpts from these operas? They're really good excerpts from these operas. And then we have Der Barbier von Sevilla uh, with Ernst Hayflieger and Rita Streich and Kim Borg as Basilio and Ivan Sardi as Bartolo and Raymond Grumbach as a very good Figaro. Ah, Eugene Onegin by Tchaikovsky. This piece was always, you know, had its li a life in German, actually. And this is one hell of a cast. Fischer Dieskau as Onegin, Evelyn Lear as Tatiana, Birgitta Fassbender, who must have been like seven when she did this, is Olga, Fritz Wunderlich is Lenski, Marty Talvala is Gremin. Wow! I mean, come on! You know, what could be bad? And then we've got French operas. Mignon by Amboise Thomas, yeah, with Ermgard Siegfried, Catherine Geyer, Ernst Hayfliger, and Keith Engen. That's really quite the cast. Aida, ooh, Aida. This is really, this is also quite special. You've got Gloria Davy as Aida. Listen to her. She's really a, a, a pretty, pretty fine singer. And Svieta Allen is Amneris. And also the priestess. She's the priesterin. The uh, priesterin. And, and, and Shandor Konya as Radames. And Hans Hotter as Emma Nazro. When he wasn't, you know, he was taking a day off from Votan. He did Emma Nazro. And Paul Schiffler as Ramphis with the orchestra of the Wiener Volksoper under Argen Quadri, the famous, I can't even remember it, Argeo, Argeo Quadri. Yeah. And ah, oh, Verdi, die Macht des Schicksals. La Forza del Destino with Stefani, Stefania Wojtovich, very, very good singer. And Jess Thomas is Alvaro. And Fischer Dieskau again is Don Carlos Di Vargas. And Georg Stern. And Svieta Alid once again is Preziosilla. Going rataplan, rataplan, blap, 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 rataplan, rataplan, blap, blap, blap. Was that a stupid aria? Oh my God. With the Berlin Radio Symphony under Hans Löwlein. Yeah. And then La Traviata. Yeah. Um, which is really, oh, look at this. Hilde Guden is Valerie Violetta. And Fritz Wunderlich is Alfredo. And Dietrich Fischer Dieskau is Giorgio Germont. Georg Germont, and, and like other people like that, which is quite, you know, isn't that wonderful? And Claudia Hellman is Flora and Amina. She gets to do both. I, mean, I just love this. I'm looking at the cast, and when I was listening to these, like, you know, years ago when I first got this box, I just was like, wow, all this stuff was sitting there. I mean, it's wonderful that it's available. It's wonderful that it's still available. That's why you need to know about it. Finally, Nabucco. Ooh, Verdi's Nabucco with Thomas Stewart, Leanne Sinek as Abigail, Abigale, or Abigali, Evelyn Lear as Finina, Shandor Konya as Ismail, Marty Talvala as Zacharias, and Ger Gerno, Gerno Peach as Abdallah, or something like that. Oh, who cares? I mean, wow, yeah. And Rigoletto. Oh, we still have, we have Rigoletto. Well, the last one is Rigoletto. This is CD15. Now, you've got Fischer D. Scowl's Rigoletto. Now, he did it again for Kubelik in Italian. So if you have that one, which I love, by the way, you can compare the two. It's very interesting to hear him do it in German versus to hear him do it in Italian. You can see which one is better. 
And Gisela Vivarelli is Gilda. Now, Gisela Vivarelli sounds Italian, but she's singing auf Deutsch. And Ernst Kozob is the Duke. And Hildegard Rutgers is Magdalena and Giovanna. And, you know, that's what you get, basically. It's terrific. It's just terrific. It's an amazing collection of 15 opera highlight discs with all of the juicy stuff. I'm just putting it away here. And, I, you know, and these fantastic original, original jackets, original covers, which are fun to look at if you, like, care about that kind of stuff. So you can see what people in the early 60s in Germany were, were finding when they went noodling through their record bins in the opera section. And it's all just it's all just amazing. Absolutely amazing to have these fabulous casts doing this stuff for the local German audience. And when you have a a musically fairly well educated local audience that really cares, you make some great records for them of music that they would not otherwise bother with because not only being fairly well educated, they are of course nationalistic and and insane and they think that they're better than everybody else and and they're like, you know, snotty little bigots. And so, you know, snotty little bigots have make demands on quality. You might call this the snotty little German bigot box. But who cares? <laughs> it's terrific. It's terrific. So thank you, all you snotty little German bigots. We're so happy that you did this for the rest of us. Keep on listening, folks. Take care.